Hi, and uh, welcome to Fireset Chat uh, by Creatio. I am your host, Alex Petronenko, Product Evangelist with Creatio. And today I have some very great speakers with me on this chat. I would like you all to welcome David Lasher from uh, King360. David. Uh, also, got Tolga Artan from uh, Lucky Eye, chairman, chairman of Lucky Eye. And as well, Harshan Sanadira, head of product implementation at Mitra Ventures. Gentlemen, welcome to the Fireside Chat. Thank you for having the time to join me on this event. Uh, and today, we have a quite interesting topic to cover. So I think it is a little bit over a year, maybe a year and one month, since the two-week lockdown started last year from COVID-19. And I think last year, everybody was quite positive, thinking that this whole thing is going to end pretty quickly. We're going to be getting back to normal. Then a few months in, uh, people understood that this is getting serious, right? We all started making predictions on how the business world is going to change. We had a lot of conversations around uh, remote versus on site. If we're ever going to go back to normal or if this is going to be the new normal, right? And today on our Fireside chat, we're going to be discussing the digital transformation trendsetters caused by COVID-19 and lessons learned that we've uh, and lessons that we've learned within the past year. Right. So I think this is quite topical, right, especially right now, since we do all see that the businesses continue changing, regardless of the fact that vaccinations are starting. Right. And I believe that uh, we should really discuss your opinions and your thoughts in this topic. So I'm going to be monitoring this. I'm going to be kind of guiding the conversation. Right. But we really want to hear your thoughts uh, on this topic. And I would like to encourage all of our audience to leave their questions and thoughts in the chat area. We're going to bring some of those up throughout the discussion. And gentlemen, let's just kick it off. Uh, and uh, David, if you want to go first, uh, tell us what you think. Oh, well, put me on the spot. I'll take it. OK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I think at this point, what everybody realizes is not controversial and, and, and not interesting is that the new normal means distributed work, right, and distributed teams. That's, that's not um, uh, interesting anymore. Um, I think, uh, but I, th I think we have to ask, OK, if there's going to be distributed teams, where where are, what's the mix of teams together versus teams distributed that that we're all going to settle into that actually works best right i i don't we can talk about as we go through uh, this group here did a, a little conversation earlier this week and i don't I don't think that total, totally remote works for business any more than it has worked for my daughter's school right i mean there's a, a a need to uh sure. get back into the into the classroom into into the school setting for for a number of different reasons right um but i think going forward just like i think schools elementary in my daughter's case so it's they're going to be much more open to distributed work in the future than has been the case heretofore and so i don't think that we're going to be able to answer where the calibration lies. I'm just I'm just positing as we get started here that um, it's going to be interesting, and all leaders need to be need to be thoughtful about what is the right mix. I, I guys, I, I don't think that anybody has the answer yet. Do you guys? Harshan, I'll put you on the on on the on the spot. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, so basically, uh, correct. Uh, so initially, we were okay with uh, the distributed team concept, uh, work from home, uh, remote work, and uh, initially we were a bit paranoid whether we would be able to retain the same level of efficiencies. But uh, uh, for the first few months, I would say it, it was working. But then again, a whole lot of problems started kicking in. Uh, you know, the stress levels, and then uh, there were cases of. Uh, um, you know the uh, the overall mental health of the employees were, were going haywire uh, because uh, some people were not used to work in isolation. Uh, some people who used to work in teams in collaboration. Uh, so actually, that uh, created some avenue, some opportunity for us to develop uh, some collaboration platforms and remote uh, health monitoring platforms. Actually, uh, what we as an organization did was we quickly developed a platform which was able to help organizations to uh, measure the uh, employee well-being uh, in terms of like daily questionnaires uh, like a touch point uh, automatic uh, you know responses kind of things we quickly built uh, that platform in order to uh, help organizations uh, uh, 
to uh, take a measure of uh, the overall employee well-being. Uh, that was something we quickly did uh, identifying the uh, the new norm because uh, we didn't see uh, we are getting back to the previous norm that is you know coming to office working uh, in same environment any year sooner. Uh, so that concept was uh, quite popular. We had our first customer from USA. Uh, and that again one one uh, new thing that is the time to market concept uh, earlier we were talking about months uh, in terms of time to market but now uh, we are talking about num in terms of number of weeks uh, because you need something quickly uh, you need to spin off something quickly uh, in order to uh, you know because you can't wait because the, the conditions would change pretty much uh, on daily basis uh, depending on how many uh, cases they find uh, how many restrictions they would enforce how many new regulatory requirements they would enforce for instance one of our uk cust US customers uh, they had a new regulatory requirement where uh, every employee had to report their uh, certain senses like uh, uh, their uh, health conditions uh, whether they have traveled outside of the state kind of things uh, overnight before reporting to work uh, on the following day so with a typical paperwork it was not possible so we quickly uh, using creation we quickly developed uh, a solution uh, so that they can actually provide the responses and get the approval uh, automatically based on a logic and uh, that was actually uh, became quite popular so uh, overall um, uh, the things are still we are still uh, trying to figure out as david correctly said the correct mix uh, as to how we're going to operate but uh, what we can do is as uh, leaders or as uh, you know uh, employees entrepreneurs in information technology what we can do is how we can we can we can realize we can figure out how we can support uh, the businesses uh, the society employees because employee well-being is very important and also uh, the overall uh, uh, governments and all that so that's where i believe and that's where we are doing uh, for more than a year uh, since this pandemic started all right, perfect. Salga, so, what are your thoughts on the uh, kind of the very first trends that you've noticed in the changing world? Yeah, in the first three months, we were also working remotely as there was a total lockdown in the country. Uh, but afterwards, we start working with a hybrid mode as, as we have some obligations to work in the R&D center. So it was a, a, a mix of uh, changing people in different weeks and trying to understand your risk and try to avoid uh, COVID uh, inside the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, so with this experience, we, we have developed an AI-based mobile app that helps to understand our organization's uh, health on a daily basis. And also, uh, I, I think the most important uh, thing became like uh, the psychology of the people that we are working with, because uh, at the first, it was just uh, Zoom meetings everywhere, uh, talking together and chats in the Instagram. So there were lots of noise going back and forward. But afterwards, after a couple of months, then it started to decline because uh, you were at home all the time, in most of the time. But uh, you, I think, lose some kind of your some of your energy uh, to talk in in a remote uh, work, especially in the business side. Uh, we also exaggerated the number of meetings, I think, uh, because uh, from one hour meetings, there were like 10 meetings per day at the beginning, but then we understood that it makes our business not uh, efficient. Uh, instead, because we didn't uh, keep any time for them to work. We were just talking on the meetings, but no time for doing the business uh, in some cases. Uh, hey, but afterwards, talking. Sorry, yes, David. I think you just raised something that's pretty interesting, which is you know, maybe a little bit different in this remote world, and we don't know exactly where we're going to land in the right mix, as I was saying. It's, it's, this, it's this meetings for meetings sake. Now, that's always been a part of business, right, or any social endeavor, right? But I know that I, I've you know, talked to others, and... I think that there, one of the things that leaders need to be on the alert for is this dynamic of meetings for meetings sake, right? Um, and I think that maybe we settled into it within business across the world, a, a pattern of a little too much meetings for meetings sake. I, any reactions to that? It's, uh, 
Well, I can say that, well, you know, you guys have raised some very interesting and kind of, you know, quite common trends, right, that I and we with Creation have been able to identify as well. And of course, uh, the very first, uh, the very first few months were also very challenging because none of the organizations knew how to keep everyone engaged, right? Because you know all of the teams that used to be working in a closed environment in, or at least in the same room, right now were very distributed, not because of even different geographies, right? But even stay in their own homes. And uh, I remember that by at that time, uh, all of our prospects that were kind of in the pipeline before the pandemic, when it started, also continued asking for how do we keep our staff engaged? How do we keep our users, you know, kind of in the same collaborative mode as we were in the offices, but now staying at home? So digitalization, uh, you know, Arshan, something you mentioned, David, you know, uh, workforce distribution and this kind of a continuous engagement were definitely one of the hottest topics of the uh, of the uh, of the response and, and the trends that were arising from that point. But um, what if we think a little bit from not just our own experiences, right? But all of you guys have tremendous experience working with other customers, with your customers, right? What were the challenges that they were facing, and what was one of the you know kind of common line, common theme that everybody was raising uh, throughout this year? Uh, the organizations that I work with, I'm not sure that their problems were any different than than the ones that we've already been discussing, right? It, it, it's um, in okay, we have to adapt to a distributed world. Okay, well, the first impulse was to try to keep people productive, right? And then we got through about probably we got to last summer, and the topic that's come up from Harshan and um, and, and Tolga of well, what about morale, right? We started to see morale flagging, right? And for everybody, it was um, new ground and new kinds of problems. And, I, and what I consistently saw was organizations trying to figure out um, how to keep folks productive with a good mindset um, while remaining on, on, on institutional mission, right? And, uh, and, and myself, I, I haven't seen, I, I don't see any magic answer, right, that, that applies for everybody. And I, um, and, and that's why I, I, I guess maybe I started my comments with, I, I think that we don't, because, precisely because we don't know quite what the new norm really is, the responsibility of leaders is to tr try to continue to experiment and be open to different models so we can figure out what the right balance is, because we're not going back to the way we used to be. So, any thoughts on that? Uh, I also want to uh, add some uh, different perspective uh, beside the uh, employee efficiency or the efficiency of the organization. What I experienced in our market was after uh, July, they start to focus on reaching their customers and their customer engagement, reaching the new customers and the and the keeping the a current customer base. It became a, a top priority for the or most most of the organizations. And uh, when we uh, look inside, it's the employee efficiency, it's the engagement with the employees. We start our own. We start looking into our own organizations and trying to uh, increase the efficiency or the morale of our own people. But then we understood that we have to keep the same efforts with the customers. Uh, and it became more and more important because uh, our uh, previous experience was using a, 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 a off offline sales organization in most of the companies, but most of the time the offline channels cut down, shut down, and then they have to find new ways of engaging new customers and keeping the current ones because the old channels were not working efficiently. And at that time, uh, reaching new customers through online channels or uh, in, 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 engaging with the current customers became a priority for most of the organization uh, in our country uh, and we, we had uh, created lots of different projects in the in that in the second half of the uh, year 2020 based on this uh, and we also i also seen that even in the uh, very traditional uh, markets sectors 
uh, companies try to find new, innovate uh, new ways of reaching these people or these companies in B2B and B2C. And there are lots of efforts on go going on there. And we are also trying to be very creative in that area because technology is uh, helping us to reach people more efficiently than pre our previous uh, experience. So with the new normal, I think we should be very innovative uh, using the technology, using the services we have, and integrating from, from the uh, customer and to the employee and finding the right technology and morale and also the strategy that we have to combine together. There, we, we might talk about this, about it as a digitalization or digital transformation, uh, but it has started very rapidly. Okay, interesting. And uh, Hershon, well, uh, Tolga, you mentioned a few interesting topics, right, about how how the different requirements were changing, right, specifically in regards to, you know, reaching out to the customers. And I believe that, you know, as dreadful as it was, the, uh, you know, uh, the year 2020 was somewhat a golden age of digital transformation, right, because all of the organizations understood that they have to go through this process. But, Arshan, if you could share, uh, since you know, because you're the uh, head of the uh, product implementation, from your kind of a hands-on experience, how were the customer requirements requirements changing in those projects of implementation that you were, uh, you know, kind of uh, overseeing? Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think uh, I touched upon in my previous response as well. So we have seen uh, the uh, now, for instance, we were predominantly into uh, IT service delivery as an organization. Uh, but uh, with the pandemic hit, we have seen a lot of uh, IT budget cuts on certain projects because the priorities were changed and some of the customers were badly hit. For instance, uh, customers in travel and uh, leisure and uh, you know such sectors actually they had they had to cut on their uh, expenditure and then uh, we actually uh, realized that we need also to change in order to respond to the uh, current uh, conditions. So we immediately uh started uh, some sort of uh, you know products we developed a product in uh, healthcare uh, called dynamics uh, that actually uh, takes care of the uh, remote health remote well-being technic aspects likewise uh, so we developed that product and uh, we actually uh, started uh, having conversations with uh, you know our existing customers uh, as to uh, for them to explore uh, the new avenues uh, in, in terms of uh, how to respond to this kind of uh, situation. And as I said earlier, the uh, the duration of the projects were uh, coming coming very coming to uh, you know short uh, uh, durations. I would say as opposed to months, uh, it was like they wanted solutions immediately. The earlier we would spend. Uh, you know lavishly uh, on discovery to identify what exactly the requirement they want and then uh, we did uh, tailor-made uh, implementations uh, but uh, that luxury uh, that timeline uh, was no longer available so we were also forced to provide quick rapid solutions uh, and that is where uh, we actually uh, became a creation partner and started developing solutions using the low code platform because uh, that is the uh, one of the uh, one of the ways for us to Cater to that demand, cater to that ask from the customers that uh, to develop a solution uh, in weeks, not in months, not in years. Uh, so that was the main change. Uh, and the uh, second aspect was actually being creative. I think Tolga, you uh, you spot on, you uh, touched upon that. Uh, you have to be extremely creative. Uh, you can't again due to the same measure. Uh, there are challenges. There are uh, people challenges. There are process challenges. There are resource challenges. So in in all all that uh, aspects, you have to be extremely creative in order to uh, provide a solution uh, in, in this kind of context. Because uh, as uh, we all agree, uh, the conditions are no longer safe. So in my in my experience, uh, we have seen these drastic uh, changes uh, from the asks from the customers uh, in terms of even even in terms of budgets. Because uh, some customers uh, they have actually uh, they would. Uh, in, in typical situation, if someone would spend 100k on a, a implementation in, in current condition, I don't think uh, they would have that uh, same luxury of spending uh, such a, a lot of money on an implementation. So therefore, we actually again um, re-emphasizing on productizing uh, things, uh, having uh, kind of having uh, developed a, a product to cater some sort of a market segment and reuse the product was actually uh, being efficient even for us, even for customers. Uh, so those were the uh, drastic measures or dr drastic changes I have experienced in in this uh, uh, period where we have actually uh, started facing challenges. 
But so uh, Tolga talked about sales and keeping customers. Harshan, you're talking about your teams, your products and, and, and solutions you're delivering. Now, one of the things that I think is is diff is going to be quite different going forward, and there's there's no answer to yet. Uh, this must be my theme um, today. Uh, no answer yet. Um, is like I speak for myself, but I don't think I'm alone in the following. On 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 the on the sales side, to bring up what Tolga did first, right? Retain. There's only so much you can do with more digital outreach, right? And 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 arm's length, you know, trying trying to make sure your clients are are satisfied with products and services you're delivering. Uh, it's, that's especially true if we're talking about the kinds of complex solutions that that that, that are IT driven that that we deliver. So on the sales side, you know, traditionally a lot of success, a lot of getting the voice of your customer, right? Has been sitting down, those impromptu hallway meetings, right? And conversations, right? The 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 the, the unplanned, un, un, unscripted, no agenda kind of uh, uh, information, conversations, dynamics that, that you would get. A lot of times that's where I would learned something that was important to my client that I needed to act upon, I would never get in a Zoom meeting, right? Uh, you know, uh, so that's on the sales and on the delivery side, it's the same thing, it's the walk the hallway, right? We can have all the status reports we want <laughs> um, and, you know, they're probably necessary. Uh, but the way I have always learned what really is going on with the team or, or what really needs my attention is you know, the things that people don't want to report or can't be put into a status report, right? And, and again, it's the sit down at the desk, have the conversation, um, uh, not, not over Zoom or Meet or whatever we're using here. Um, uh, and right now, we are shorn of those tools in managing, in, in getting information from our teams and our clients. And, and I, all I can say is that the, the leaders with these responsibilities just need to be aware. I don't have the answer, but you've got to figure out a way to be getting that information with the communication channels that are available to us right now. Right? Um, because uh, otherwise you're going to get a false picture of the world, right? I mean, on the whether it's from your clients or your delivery teams, it is just natural that it's going to be reported a little more sunny than it actually is, right? So, David, do you believe that the you know the channels of communication that we currently have are insufficient to maintain this clarity and reportability, or having this? or having the enough of a connection to run these projects, to uh, communicate to the customers, to successfully uh, continue working and living? Or are you saying that they are sufficient and uh, we can, there's, it, they can always be better, but uh, essentially they are sufficient. Is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm saying barely acceptable the way we are will keep us at a degraded level of performance and, and we need to find ways to get back to natural human way modes of communication right um that are so expressive right that that are that where where ad hocery can really occur right um revelations can 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 it can be had right um we're not going to be able to do that with just you know distributed the, the way we're interacting right now <laughs> so it was the former, not the latter, for sure. Interesting, interesting thought, uh, Harshan Tolga. Do you agree? Do you disagree with uh, with David on this one? I have some different uh, experiences in the in the, in in, in, in co co uh, previous uh, eight months. Uh, we are also uh, trying to have our customers reach in the, their uh, target audiences using the digital channels. So in some cases, we 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 were quite successful. Uh, about making them uh, keeping in touch with the new uh, targets that they they were uh, having trying to reach, uh, especially <laughs> even in the very very uh, traditional markets. Uh, for example, we created an, an an online platform that helps 
uh, the online uh, visitors to reach the product experts in four minutes, uh, which is not also available. Whenever you try to arrange a Zoom meeting or, or an online meeting, it takes at least 10 days for a B2B organization to, to have a proper meeting. But we just canceled uh, the, the, this time, shortened this time into four minutes, and we had hundreds of leads for our customer for that. It was very surprising for them having this channel and keeping their sales team busy, even, even they were sitting in their homes. It was totally different uh, experience that they were having in that part. Uh, some of our clients have, uh, have uh, big webinars uh, where they were trying to influence their target audience uh, with the new services and products that can be used during this period of time. Uh, and also they try to have this engagement through a sales process where they, they can uh, close some deals uh, based on this. Uh, but different uh, target markets, uh, different organizations and different channels have different answers for, 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 for the question. So I, I agree with David that we should be having a human touch in all the engagement that we have. But there are some other ways of uh, starting this human touch uh, and starting this conversation. Even uh, in the last uh, nine months, we have two companies as a client where we have never physically meet, met before. It was totally online and we delivered the projects and we, they are still our customers. So we are also learning lots of things from this experience uh, in our organization. But uh, I, I totally agree in this point. We are learning through this process. We are not at the end of this process, this, this period, and maybe I don't know how long it will take, but we will try to find out new ways of uh, creating different engagements between different parties in the organizations. I, I think, uh, Tolga, you beat me to it. Uh, I, I, I actually uh, had a similar opinion that is, uh, we actually uh, uh, discovered that uh, we got more opportunities because uh, the borders were closed and it actually opened up a new avenue. For instance, I think we closed uh, many more logos during last year, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, because of the same fact, because uh, sometimes a company or a customer would expect uh, the implementation team to be in presence physically uh, at, the, at the client side. But uh, in this situation, uh, it's not possible. So in terms of competition, uh, it would have been fair uh, for someone who has local presence uh, and uh, for someone like us who's uh, based in uh, the implementation team is based in Sri Lanka uh, who actually work on same grounds because uh, whether they are uh, they have local presence or not uh, it was not merely a, a factor to compare so I, I believe it actually yes it lost the human touch and uh, it actually uh, we, we can't uh, have the face-to-face -face meeting to the customers in a uh, in a round table in, in in a conference room but still for all we somehow maximized all the digital channels and uh, strived through the challenges and as i said it actually opened up uh, a set of new avenues for us uh, new, opened up new markets also for us i think it could be the same it could be the case for uh, some more organizations, uh, customers and uh, implementers or uh, product vendors uh, as such. Uh, whilst uh, agreeing with David on uh, the uh, loss of human touch, it also created new uh, opportunities as well. Yeah, and I would uh, don't disagree with any of that, right? And we're all saying, you know, we need to find new tactics. What I still don't, still don't know, and none of us don't know, <laughs> There's some bad English for you. Um, is look the the business dinner, right? The the conversation over the bottle of wine, right? Yes, you can you can dismiss it and degrade it, and, but but something happens there, right? For there are some situations, there are some topics that need to be discussed where you you need that kind of setting, you need that kind of human it, it's a human that human interaction and you know we haven't had that for 15 months now it'll just be interesting to see when and how, when we're able to kind of get back to that and at what level that is part of what we're doing in business versus the other tactics that we can uh, be novel or long-standing that, that that we've been we've been adopting it's the mix that i'm, I'm talking about 
Well, um, I definitely have some of my own thoughts on, on this subject, uh, but I'm only here to kind of assist you guys to monitor the, uh, the conversation, right? Uh, I, well, I personally think that uh, this whole pandemic thing is going to go on for another 15 months, and by the time we're over, the new business world will, is going to be all set. Right, and I don't, I don't believe that going out for uh, you know business dinners is going to be quite that frequent uh, as it used to be before, right? And, be, uh, and especially because Harshan and Tolga, as you mentioned, um, you know, when you're moving f to full digital interaction, and if you, I believe that you can make it personal and a little bit more of a, you know, um, human, human like to communicate with someone online with someone online. Um, you just can do so much more, right? You're cutting costs, you're cut, cutting costs of time to travel, to meet on sites, and to go back. So at least by you know sixty percent. But that's big, yeah, right. This, this yeah, Alex. I, I think uh, I, I have to, a little uh, thing to add over here. Something we experienced. Uh, so when we started working from home, uh, initially we, uh, as I said, uh, we figured out that it was we were so productive, uh, efficient, and all that. Uh, cut off uh, operating cost and all that. Uh, however, uh, that human touch, uh, which David mentioned, we felt that something was missing. That synergy uh, was missing. The team uh, spirit was missing. So we made it mandatory for the team to switch on the video camera. Uh, that made a difference. Trust me, that made a difference because uh, rather than speaking to a, a photo or you know uh, some uh, background image, uh, it made a whole difference uh, having the video camera switched on and uh, sh seeing the facial expressions, uh, seeing uh, you know uh, the maybe smiley faces, and uh, some, when 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 I'm encouraging my team members, I, I shouldn't be uh, I, I should be visible. I should be having my facial expression. So uh, that is something I have experienced. We have actually experienced uh, how we can maximize as much as possible to have the human touch, uh, the human interaction. Uh, in this uh, digital world. I think that is where we need to, as David said, that is where we need to strive to find a, a better mix uh, or maybe novel solutions uh, like, you know, the animation. I don't know. There are a lot of uh, uh, new things which are being experimented, but uh, we need to find that uh, perfect answer and the perfect model. But till then, we would do our, uh, you know, R&D, uh, you know, trial and error, and we would, uh, we would strive through. Yeah, and uh, we're also just going to use this as a uh, kind of segue back into our topic of conversation today, right? Um, well, uh, David, Tolga, you mentioned this uh, at least once through, through your kind of thought sharing, right? And Harshan, you mentioned this as well. Uh, how do how do we what how important is actually thought leadership within the organization, right? And leadership skills. Uh, to to guide and to support the uh, the staff within these times, right? Because again, there were a lot of challenges that were raised, right? There were a lot of challenges related to the business environments themselves, to uh, you know, well-being, mental health, and there was a lot of pressure that was put on the leadership of the organizations, right? To again, uh, to keep it uh, keep it going, right? And uh, you know, starting with the, just having 10 meetings a day, which was, you know, proven to be inefficient, Olga, right? Uh, and uh, other uh, kind of actions that were taken. So how do you guys think uh, where, where this was within this whole uh, kind of uh, this whole year? I, I, I think that you know, my theme besides not knowing is, is it, uh, the, the not knowing is about not knowing what human factors, natural human interactions we're missing in the in in the in the new dynamics and figuring out just being alert to thinking what are we missing and how how can we bring it back or do we need to bring it back um and so on leadership i think that this new way of interacting and collaborating puts a higher premium and more responsibility on leaders than ever before right i think i i, I think that being a leader through zoom to you know kind of use zoom like Kleenex, right? <laughs> um, use the brand name generically. Zoom's, Zoom's going to come after me, right? Um, uh, um, but uh, it's, you know, it's not easy to be a leader in this through this way, right? Um, and I, I, what is part of leadership? Part of leadership is again these these impromptu mo moments that I'm talking about where you you. 
you find out that somebody's struggling with something, whether it's in work or outside of work, right? So a team member of yours and you're a leader and you have that conversation and you prove that you are or aren't a leader uh, in that moment, right? Uh, that's very hard to do in this this kind of interaction world. Uh, so, so that would be, you know, th that's another one of these unknowns and leaders need to lead and they need to be thinking about how do I do it in this new world? And I don't think there are any answers yet. You're being very uh, politically correct today, uh, David. There are no answers, right? There's no, no Tom black. Excuse me of that. Anything no, but no that. Proven, no proven answers, no proven models, yeah. I mean, and uh, okay. one more aspect. Cool. Yeah, Sorry. go ahead. Yeah. No, one more aspect I was thinking, uh, this from again, uh, from uh, the experience and from I've seen, uh, some leaders uh, would have to make some bold moves in, in, a, in a situation like that. So that is something I have seen. Uh, we also made some bold moves and uh, it was a risk at the beginning, but a uh, lot of moves such we, we, we've taken, uh, it was actually later on, uh, only time would uh, prove or prove you wrong or prove you right. However, uh, as a leader, sometimes in, in a situation like that, you have to make a bold move. Uh, that, that was something uh, I want to add to what David said. You know, I can give an, I think I can give an example. Um, you know, it's, so what's part of leadership? Part, I, I think that one thing we might end up discovering over the next 12 to 24 months, um, uh, now that we've moved into a new mode and learning where we are and, 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 and pluses and minuses, is, you know, a lot of leadership and management came from this walking around. That I, like, like, sometimes people were engaged in act, activities that they didn't know that they were leading and managing, if that, if that makes sense, right? Or at least it wasn't a, something consciously that they were trying to do or prioritize. And so I think, so on governance, I think that one thing, one discipline that becomes heightened in the new world, and I feel very strongly about this, is governance, okay? Governance. And what do I mean by that? I, I mean, so governance classically, open up the textbook, it means decision rights, right? Who has who who has the rights to make which decisions? And that's maybe a little helpful, but not very, right? Um, but what it comes down to is you got to make sure that that everybody uh, in your different in your different teams and overlapping teams, everybody knows who's supposed to be doing what, right? And 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 they and they know how to get help or report an issue when they need to. Uh, for the project managers out there, things like RACI diagrams, right? I mean, right, the RACI methodology, um, like anything can be over, you know, it, it can be helpful, it can be unhelpful. But I think that at least a RACI kind of mindset, you know, leaders and managers going through, making clear to a whole team, who's responsible for this deliver, deliverable or activity, right? And who's supporting them? And who needs to be informed, right? I think that in the new world, there has to be more explicitness about that than maybe in the old, old world where we could get those signals through these natural human interactions that, that, that I've contended we're shorn of now. So, so that's just an example. Like govern, I'm, I'm trying to inject governance in as something as, as more of a priority now than ever, as well as leadership. That's, that's, that would be the point. Absolutely. And uh, Talga, what are your thoughts on the uh, importance of governance, right, and also leadership uh, within this year and how this has affected uh, organizations? I think leadership uh, is being challenged all through the year with, with all the uh, risks that uh, comes around the businesses and the companies. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, beside this, uh, the, 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 the uh, difference between thinking about your life, your family life, your employees' life, and your customer lives, uh, are, as they are some kind of in danger, uh, you, you, you make decisions according to different uh, criteria beside the, the normal criteria that, or the normal KPIs that we are following through in a regular business. Right now, the health or the lives of people are in, uh, are in uh, risk at that part. So uh, managing through this risk, risk uh, is, is a diff difficult, very difficult issue for a leader in, in, in any organization, uh, in a government organization, in a company, or an NGO, in any type of organization. Uh, so uh, leaders should learn more and more 
from this experience that they are passing through right now and they should be open-minded and i think the open-minded leaders will be uh, finding ways of minimizing the risks uh, in different parts of the business or different parts of the uh, organization uh, in, in in this uh, period that we are passing through right now and right now uh, you you are trying to uh, you are saying that it will take 15 more months to to be in a, some kind of a new normal and everybody has a different expectation and we came here from the first our first expectation was within two months we will we will be doing our own business as usual but right now we are in the 13th or 14th month right now like in different countries we are working through and we are learning a lot together uh, but in the next months, we will be we will be required to learn more, to minimize these risks and to keep our business in track with the new normals, with the new functionalities that we are uh, facing through. And also, uh, this will be the most important part of the or in organization, uh, innovative, uh, learning from the, uh, the 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 experiences that they are having and trying to rapidly adapt to these uh, changes in the business life i think absolutely absolutely right. uh, yes David. alex can, can yeah. i can i point out that we've gone 40 minutes um in a session um <laughs> hosted and facilitated by creatio uh, on important topics and and the word change has come up i don't know every every other minute if not twice a minute somewhere in that range and we haven't mentioned something that, that I don't know if you've heard of before, low code. Have you heard of these low code platforms? <laughs> I, have, I have heard this somewhere. I'm not you, sure you've heard, it. yeah. And, I, and, I, think, I think it's something similar to no code, but I'm not quite sure though. <laughs> well, I, I, I do not bring this in just to do my obeisance to the Creatio team and, right, and hosts. And I, 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 I I actually feel that this is a that, that low code is as a movement. I mean, we like Creatio, but as a movement, right? Low code. I think it's an important part of the go forward way of operating business. And the the the, the simple reason why is that low code is the only way to be um, sufficiently agile with your technology that you can be agile as an organization, right? And and if you're not agile as an organization, you're not going to be able to adapt to change. And there's still so much that we don't know that that whatever the operations are, I I I think that any any senior manager, director, executive, um, uh, especially outside of IT, okay, I want to say especially outside of T IT, if they're not asking the question, how might this low code stuff that i'm hearing about from my cio how, how 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 might it make us more resilient how might it is how might us find the new norm that we want to be at right um I, I think if they're not doing that they are being negligent in their responsibilities i i think low code is that different and can be that much of a a, a decision maker a, a change a, a difference maker and Alex, you probably want to debate me on that. I, I, you probably have a different point of view. Um, absolutely. I actually, you know, you know me. I like a good debate, but um, you got me there. I fully agree. I mean, nobody knows what's ahead of us, right? What the future holds, but we all can learn from uh, from past, not only mistakes, just from the past, right? And uh, it says that you have to be ready for pretty much anything, and you have to be ready to turn the ship 180 degrees, right? Or at least 90 degrees, sharp 90 degrees. And, uh, you know, based on the facts, this can only be uh, possible when you've got the tools uh, in your uh, toolbox to quickly adapt your processes, quickly adapt your organization to whatever is going to come in your way. And luckily, this is where uh, low and no code are uh, actually in, right? This is what, how we help organizations. And I'm not speaking just from our experience, but from even Harshan's experience, right? That Mitra created Dynamatics within a couple of weeks, rolled it out to their customers straight away, and this has proven, you know, show great results of how local technologies can help organizations adapt uh, and in, in created applications uh, very, very fast, right? But yeah, yeah absolutely. 
Yeah, sorry. I, 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 I think it's wrong to look at low code as a technology tool. I think it has to be looked at as a strategic opportunity um, by, by, by the business side of, 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 of the leadership team. It's, it's that important. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, Alex. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I also want to add a couple of points in this in this part because uh, before the COVID situation, uh, we were experiencing, uh, in especially uh, the, the big organizations where there are lots of uh, huge enterprise applications uh, going forward. But there are some couple of operations that are missing that are not covered by these applications, and they were done manually. Especially the emails were the baseline for all these. Uh, communications or the information trans uh, information passing through the organization. Uh, th this was the first. Uh, this was the main uh, item that we were thinking about the low code where we can have all these uh, processes uh, covered by low code applications, which are done very easily and very rapidly and changed according to the requirements of the organizations. In that part, also we experienced that. There is, there is a need for changing using AI inside the organizations for keeping the organizations uh, more efficient and keeping the KPIs according to the new, uh, the coming decade, uh, according to our uh, customer base. We have seen that uh, if you want to adapt a, a artificial intelligence in your organization, you also need to cover up the, the feedbacks of the AI uh, algorithms uh, as a Backend of uh, operation or best backend application, uh, but they are not covered with the uh, regular or uh, tools that they are using currently right now. So there should be a layer where uh, that where, where you can develop instantly applications and uh, use uh, use different use, user interfaces to uh, cover within these applications. And I think this is where low code uh, enters the scene and become a useful. A mindset in an organization. I totally agree with David. It's, it's, it's a type of a mindset shift uh, because uh, it, it should be easy, it should be uh, agile, and if you can keep it in the organization uh, as a mindset, then we have lots of uh, efficient ways of doing different uh, types of uh, processes that you are covering in an organization. Yeah, I mean, just an example. I mean, the topic here is COVID, right? Um, and uh, so I have uh, I have a friend who is a CIO of a four hundred million dollar um, uh, closed door pharmacy, as we say in in um, in, in our, serving the long term care facilities, uh, nursing homes um, across across the the states. And so with COVID. Uh, he found himself in in the need once the vaccines came out last fall, right? Well, they're 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 a pharmacy serving the nursing homes. Nursing homes are prioritized for distribution, right? And you know the news is the news comes out that the vaccines are available. the The customers that they have are the first to receive them, right? And there is a massive planning, right? The, the, uh, the uh, exercise that needs to go on, and data sharing, and and whoever thought that they need, did he have an application sitting around to to figure this all out? No, he didn't. <laughs> he's good, but he's not that good. <laughs> um, and you know, his CEO came to him and said, "This is what we need to do." And and um, so what was he? So he was able in four hours to put together an online application to, to deploy to the administrators and, and, and health leaders in, in, in the nursing homes, start doing the surveys, start doing the plan. He was able to put that together in four week, four hours. And what his estimate was is that normally before low code, it would have taken him and a couple of people on his team two weeks, right? Now, I mean, two weeks probably would have still been sufficient, but I also want to emphasize it wasn't just from two weeks to four hours. It was that he is see he just said this is important, and he ended up doing it himself, right? And his team gets to continue working on other 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 priorities, whatever they are. 
And, um, you know, this was another low code platform, um, but this is what's possible and it's not, and, and you can't do it any other way. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, low codes and the whole low and no code concept, right? They are opening great, they're opening the door into the future, right? Where we can create amazing applications that we need not in two weeks, but we need right now, right? And we can create them now within just uh, a couple of minutes, hours, well, not minutes, right? You can you can still do something in minutes, but applications in a couple hours in a day and gain, I would say, an immediate uh, value from those applications, right? Or at least uh, have a starting point to gain that value. And uh, Gentlemen, uh, this was uh, a uh, great, great transition into our closing, uh, uh, closing message. Uh, as we're talking about low code, I would like to announce to our audience and as well uh, remind you guys that starting June 1st, we are going to be running a 10 day low code marathon, right? Which is going to be an amazing event for organizations that are looking to become digital first and low code first, right, low-code organizations as we call them, and we invite everyone to participate. This will be 10 days packed with uh, sessions and uh, speakers across different areas of low-code and how to apply it in the organizations. Right? It's going to be more than 1,200 minutes of insightful content, and I would uh, recommend everybody who is interested and intrigued by low-code to join us uh, during these days. Uh, and, oh, and of course, you know, use the QR code to get to the landing page and register for the event to get all of the updates. Uh, Harshan, Toga, David, thank you so much, guys, for finding the time for this uh, for this conversation. It was extremely insightful and interesting to uh, hear your thoughts, uh, and I really enjoyed being the host of this Fireside Chat. Thank you again, and I wish you a great day ahead of you and a great weekend. Likewise. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you, Alex.